Hi guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use all the different modes of automation which are down here. So we have read, touch, latch and write, and then alongside those we have trim and relative. So just a quick side note, we'll be looking at all the automation we're writing in, in here in our main window, and to look at that we can either hit A on the keyboard, or we can hit the automation button up here, and then it will show us all the automation we're looking at. And also whilst we have this open, we can go over here to where it says volume on this box, click on that, then we can choose anything we'd like to automate as well, anything we like that we have on this channel. Okay, so first on the list we have read, which is nice and simple in that it reads all the automation that we write in. So whenever this is turned on, we'll hear all the automation that's going on. And next we have touch. Now touch, latch and write all work in similar ways in that they will put in automation as it's going on. So if we hit play and change any parameters, then it will write the automation in for what's going on. So we'll have a look at touch first. And what's different about touch is that whenever you change the setting or a parameter and you let go of it, it will return to the original value. So if I were to hit play and move the fader up and down when it's starting on zero, then let go of it, it will always return back to zero. Okay, so I'll just show you an example. So I'll hit play. Then as you can see, when I let go there, it returned back to zero. But it's still writing all that information we've got going on there. Now, I personally find that quite annoying. It can be useful for some things, but I like to leave it to the value I get it to. So we can either just double click that and get rid of it, or we can use latch, which does the exact same thing as touch, only we don't then need to do that. So it will leave it at whatever value it ends up on. So touch is good for certain things for maybe subtle but constant automation going on so maybe just a few db change in volume because it's always going back to the original volume i personally find latch a lot better you can use it for things like a fade in so we can change this to latch bring this right down and then fade it in. And as you can see, when I let go there, it stayed there, whereas if it were on touch, it would have shot back down to basically silence. And another good use for a fade in for latch would be to maybe have the high frequencies cut out at the start and then fade it in using latch. So if we hit play, we can just change this parameter and it will automate it in for us. So. And again, as you can see there, it's staying there where I want it to stay. Whereas if it were on touch, it would shoot back down and not really be where I want it to be. Okay, so next up is write. And write's a bit of a weird one in that when you select it for the first time, Logic tells you it doesn't really recommend using it. And it tells you to use touch or latch instead. And I find it a bit bizarre that they've even left it in because well, I'll, I'll show you what it does, but it's a bit hit or miss. So let's just automate in a bit of a volume. Just something going on and let's change it to write. And if I hit play and so I just forget to do anything with it, it goes over and deletes all of it. Now this can be good if you want to write in brand new automation, but it's a really dangerous one to have on because even then when I hit pause when I stopped it, it changed it back to touch because if I were to hit play again it would have just deleted all the automation I just wrote in with write. So I can still use it. And it's kind of no different from latch in that it stays where uh, at the end placement for it but again it just changes it back to touch because if we go over it again it will delete it. Okay, so those are our three main tools, except we're not really going to use write, we're just gonna focus on touch and latch because they are far superior. Now, alongside these, we have trim and relative. Now, trim effectively offsets the value of the automation you already have going on by moving the fader up and down. And both of these can only actually be used on the fader for volume or the volume of the send or panning because it's effectively additional automation. So again, we'll just put in a little bit of volume automation going on here using latch, 
and then use trim and relative alongside it, okay? Cool, so nice and simple, and we're gonna use trim on that, so it will offset the value of what we already have going on. So as you can see, our fader here has changed, so we're effectively going to be adding to this automation, we're going to be increasing or decreasing the volume of what is going on here. Okay, so I'll hit play and you can see it going on on a red line over here and then it will affect this yellow, our normal automation line afterwards. So that's now what our automation line looks like. So what we've just done on trim has affected our automation that was already in place. Now lastly, it's relative. And relative effectively creates a second line of automation to use in conjunction with what you already have going on. So again, I'll just show you and it will become quite apparent. So now we have another line of automation going on. So you can use these alongside one another to create quite precise automation. And as I mentioned before, we have this part over here where we go and click on this and we can select what we want. So at the moment we're on the used relative for our volume. So it's our new curve we've put in. Whereas if we go to the normal volume, we have our original and you can see them in the background of one another. And if you want to see them along, alongside one another, you can simply go click this little arrow triangle here and it brings them up next to each other. So we have normal volume there, we have relative on the bottom, and then you can see them side by side. So again, this is quite useful for very precise automation. Now this method of automation can be used for practically anything and it makes everything feel a bit more human because instead of just clicking and pointing exactly where you want your automation to be, you're physically doing it and it sounds much more realistic. I also kind of use it as uh, a bit of a cheat to find where the things that I want to automate are really quickly. So say there's something in the ES2 that I want to automate, you know, I've got hundreds, you know, maybe not quite hundreds, but lots of different options to go for. If I'm not exactly sure where, say, this exact delay is, I can set it to touch or latch, I can hit play, have a quick fiddle with it, and then it's here ready for me to automate as I please. And it's also really good for, say, like with these oscillators, I've got the blend here. And if I want to change that, again, it's going to be quite a hard thing to automate in. I can just hit play. And I can change it as I like. So again, this can be used for absolutely anything. It can be used for the EQs. It can be used for any settings on reverb, compression, anything you can imagine. Chances are you can automate it. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching, cheers.